Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and I'm super excited because today I'm going to be reacting and reviewing and critiquing some of your show reels so that you can make changes that will put you in a better position to get more work. So if you're new around here, then hit the subscribe button. I've made it my mission to give more away for free than what most people would have you pay for. And this channel is completely focused around the business side of filmmaking, how to actually get clients, make money and grow to the next level. Because there's so many other channels that are all about the creative side and, and how to edit and filmmake and things like that. But no one actually teaching you about this type of thing and, and actually how to utilize your skills to get money because if you don't understand business then you quite simply won't be able to make a living from it so that's my mission is to empower people to take this jump make it a full-time career and actually make a solid business out of it for those of you who don't know my name's ross welch and within a couple of years i was able to scale my business well into the six figures we bought a studio i have a team of people working here and more importantly we get to travel the world working on some well i mean we don't travel the world now because covid but anyway we get to work with some amazing brands and there's never a dull day I, i'm always so excited for work i absolutely love my job and i love getting up every morning and just knowing the day is going to be different the projects are different and we just get to work on some amazing things and, and i want as many people to experience this as they possibly can and because we've been able to build a stable business things like covid haven't impacted us too much because we've got a baseline level and they're the things that i want to teach you but today we are obviously focusing on show reels and i want to give my feedback to help people because I see so many show reels, some that are good and some that are not so good, and it's important to understand why, but also we need to think about our target audience. Who are we trying to impress and how are we going to get work? You know, what's the purpose actually of a show reel? Well, the purpose of a show reel is to get more work. So we need to understand that when we're creating it. It's otherwise like creating a video for a client who sells, I don't know, whiskey but then doing it in a way that is more appealing to people who like ice cream. You know, like the two don't mix. So when you're trying to sell to that particular client, they're not going to be interested or it's not going to resonate with them. So it's really, really important that we understand that. And there's a few things that I can talk about that will narrow those, those things down to. Ultimately, marketing managers and business owners, they're the two key people that you want to be focused at. Or if you're a freelancer, perhaps other production companies as well. And, and there's some things that I'll kind of pick up as we go through. So anyway, I've been posting on our groups, Aspiring Videographers and Filmmakers is a free group that I run. I've currently got 13 hundred members in it. Um, so I've reached out to a few people also on my Instagram. So look, I've actually got too many for this video. So I'll just dive into a few and uh, yeah, and provide some feedback. So let's jump right into this. So we're going to actually hit it off with Tom's comment down here as well and hit Tom. So Already opening scene looks really, really cool. I like that. It helps if I unmute it. Let's go back to the beginning. Cool, I'm just gonna stop it right here quickly because um, opening is like visually stunning, really nice work with these, like it sets a really nice moody scene. Uh, my one concern, and it also shows that you're probably well traveled as well, but my one concern is the fact that, um, again, your target audience, I mean, it depends who you're pitching to, but it's quite slow. I mean, they're, they're into like, really 12 15 seconds and not a lot has happened so i'd often try and make show reels where possible a little bit more choppy but you know it depends what kind of vibe you're going for here if it's cinematic or not i mean it's a really nice cinematic start and i like what you did with um the the size the video size or letterboxing and things like that um moving into weddings i generally would always avoid having weddings um i would keep all of that stuff separately and the reason for keeping it separately is because I think a lot of businesses, if you're, if you're pitching to businesses, then they're not going to be interested in your wedding side of things. And, and weddings have kind of a bit of a bad name for like, oh, he's just a wedding photographer, a wedding videographer, you know, those things. It's kind of like downplayed. I don't think that that is the case, but I just think you should keep your corporate stuff completely separate 
to your wedding stuff as well. I mean, by all means, make a wedding show reel, but I, I would never really, you know, cross the two over because it doesn't really make that much sense. But I like the shots, I like what I'm seeing. This is cool, I really like that. That was wicked. I really love this lion. That's really, really cool. So again, Tom, here I'm just gonna say, like I feel like it lingers a bit long on the same stuff. Like you've got some stunning shots in here as well, especially like in London. And like, this is a like very Vogue-esque, like this fashion stuff. I love it. I, I think it's really, really nice. I think, I think there's some really cool shots. If we're going down like the performing arts and fashion side of things, then I think we can just condense this a lot more. I feel like there's a lot, it, it, for me, it started to get a little bit samey towards the end. Um, sometimes I think filmers struggle with this as well as making these cuts because they're like, oh, you know, I really like that clip. But you sometimes just have to be really brutal and just ax things, you know, that, that don't quite add anything more to the video that's already in there. But, um, but you, again, have some stunning shots and I think just, to just determine your target audience for this as well. And perhaps you don't necessarily need a show reel as such, you just have a, a small, or maybe a smaller show reel, or, or like, you know, just, just something a bit more industry specific perhaps as well, um, in like the performing arts and fashion thing. I think, I think that's kind of cool, but I think. Cool, hey, there we go. Um, cool, okay. So yeah, I mean, it made a lot more sense to me when this came up at the end. Um, and I think that's cool, but I've had to kind of wait until the end to really figure a lot of that stuff out. Like I had guessed fashion, I didn't guess events so much, didn't quite guess music videos, I guess kind of maybe with the dance and stuff. The aerial, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think there's a few things in there that we can kind of either expand on I like the fact that it's only a minute, I don't like long show reels, but I do think that we could cut a few things out, add a thing, expand on these points a little bit more, and it will just create a more well-rounded video, but do think about who your target audience is. If you're gonna be just specifically focusing on like fashion people um, and music videos and stuff, then just make it probably just about that, then perhaps going really, really broad with it. Um, but on the whole, mate, I think you've got some really, really stunning shots in there and really, really nice work. Um, so yeah, totally fine. I can see it was posted in 2019, so um, perhaps it's, you know, we're a year on now, so maybe nice to, to revamp it. I'm sure you've got a load of new clips in there as well. Uh, but yeah, nice. I hope, I hope the feedback's obviously helpful. Uh, let's dive into, I'm going to do two people that personally messaged me. Tom was funny. Tom was like, uh, he works with some huge brands, but um, he feels like his showreel is a bit shite. He would love to get some guidance on that. So let's, uh, let's check this out. Cool. I like, by the way, that these are all under a minute. Like it should be, your showreel shouldn't be that long at all. I think ours is about like 40 seconds. Yeah, that's sick. That's sick. Um, I love, like, people, by the way, are gonna, are gonna want text on screen, okay? And, and as a result, I can't even talk today, Jesus. Um, as a result, it's nice to incorporate those things. And little things like masking stuff around the arm here and just letting that reveal um, is, is really, really nice. They're, they're simple things and it makes a huge difference. So much more premium. Who wants that boat? Look at this. <sighs> Could you imagine? That's it, one day. Now, I haven't actually met you, but is this you? What camera have you got? Let's have a look. Is that? It's got a Panasonic arm. Oh, I have no idea. I'm so bad with Panasonics. Um, I thought it might be like a C300 or something. Um, 
but cool. Yeah, nice. Future. Yeah, mate, this is really, really nice. I mean, you clearly have some real high-end clients or, or projects that you've worked as a part of and things. Um, I love the colors as well, and like it actually all flowed really, really well. So I think that this is a great example of like having color schemes throughout your show reels and things that can work really well. Like I felt like it just went from like these blues and purples and pastel -y colors all the way through like quite nicely. So I, th I thought that was really, really cool. And again, you, you've definitely showed off like your broad variety of stuff. And this ho bringing this into the home shot was really nice as well. Um, I love that. You've, you've, got some, you've got some really great stuff. Um, I, I think the music might be a little bit slow for me personally. Like that's my personal thought. Um, I would normally go with something a bit more high paced because people generally want to feel excited when, when they do these things. Um, but I mean, I'm equally gripped by it. So I think it's cool. Yeah, nice. Your sound's really crisp as well on those fireworks. It's really, really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, this just says like luxury, high-end stuff. This bit, in all honesty, didn't really make much sense to me at all. Um, again, if we're going for like luxury, high-end kind of things, well, obviously these bits did. It was just the running around didn't make much sense to me. I'm a huge fan, by the way, behind the scenes stuff is really, really important um, because yeah, you want to show off your work, but it's also about telling people who you are and you and what kind of, you know, what to expect, which is why most of our show reel is all behind the scenes stuff and, and our, our feedback, or, or at least from our clients that have purchased as a result of showing them our show reel and things. It was clear that they understood what we did and what to expect. And therefore that helps justify your prices a little bit as well. Um, because, you know, they can see all the equipment and stuff. So I'm a huge fan of behind the scenes things. That was a nice little shot, but um, I always think people could do a little bit more of those. Um, if you're working for agencies though, which you, you may well be, um, then, because um, often a lot of PR agencies, you know, handle these clients and then they outsource their work. So um, uh, I think that's really cool. And then that makes a lot of sense, to be honest with you. Um, uh, with, with some of these, like with the style of the show reel. But yeah, really nice, mate. Um, in all honesty, I mean, I can't really afford it. I think that's a really, really nice show reel. I think you've done, done a great job. So you, you're clearly having imposter syndrome if you think that that's a pile of shite um, because I think it's really good, mate. And I think you just probably then need a little bit more confidence. Um, there's a couple of things you can touch up. So yeah. But again, guys, we're coming to the end of 2020 now. Okay, so where's your 2020 show reel? Like, I think it's important to name these things perhaps a bit better as well. Like, you know, really you want to put together a show reel now. And I mean, you can call it 2020, but then when we move into 2021, you know, actually rename that show reel. Um, and I think show reels collectively, there's this common like misconception of like, well, it needs to be work from that year. And it doesn't at all. It's just your best work. It's, it's whatever's going to get you work. Like a lot of people base their show reels around what the industry is going to think of them. And to me, that's insane because you're not getting employed by another filmmaker. Like it doesn't matter what they think. It's a matter about what your client thinks and you need to put yourself in your client's shoes. So, you know, just, just having a better understanding of what your client's needs are opposed to um, what the industry will, will kind of think of you. So just put your best clips together. It can be your 2020 show reel, um, but it doesn't mean it has to be clips just from 2020. So don't outdate yourself because if I was a client and I got this, the first thing says 2019 is like, well, Where's your 2020? Why is it not 2020? Like, are you not working at the moment? Like, what's happened? Like, it doesn't say where you're at in your business right now. And that's the thing, it's a reflection a lot of the time of those things. But we're all, um, we're all bound by different projects and, and things there as well. You know, like a project might not, might not have high budget. And as a result, um, yeah, uh, you know, your shots don't look that great, but it doesn't mean it needs to feature. So anyway, moving on, moving forward, here's a, uh, obviously another show. Again, everyone's killing it with these minute, um, minute long show reels. 
which is great, which is great. I, I often do see showreels that are way in excess of a minute and they don't really need to be. So yeah, this is good. Um, this says 2020, uh, the guy, I think it was James, was it? James had mentioned, yeah, James mentioned that um, he filmed this stuff quite a while back, but nonetheless. nice light um this little lens flare thing i like, overlaid over the top it's only because i'm a filmmaker that i would, I would understand that i feel like um, those little transition packs that you get it's not as bad as that but they're like the go-to when you start filmmaking you're like yeah transitions and you learn about like these overlays and like light flares and stuff and you like, you go mad on everything with it uh, it just it just reminded me about that but it kind of looks sorry Okay, um, I'm just gonna put up a few things here. Um, and I, I'm not a fan of these zoom transitions. They work well every so often. I think the last show had one, um, but I'm just not a fan of them. It's just like, I think it, it, it means that you didn't know how to jump from one to the other. And it's basically because you didn't have the right camera angle or your eye tracking where your eye is on it is slightly off um, and you just need to reposition it. But I'm not a fan of those kind of things um, because I think that when beginner filmmakers start filmmaking, they use all these transitions and things like that. And as a result, you then end up seeing a lot of bad work using these transitions. It's not that the transitions are bad, but it kind of does mimic those things as like an amateur level, I think a little bit in my personal opinion. Um, also, there's a lot of shots that you can drop out of this as well. Like this isn't a, a, an absolute vodka shot, uh, a brand promo video so we can drop that it doesn't really add much i think i always ask myself like you know um does this add anything to the show or does it add anything to the video and if the answer is no then it just simply shouldn't be in there as much as you like it i kind of understand bringing in these brand names a little bit but to me like i have no idea what this is who this is or or who elite is or or whatever you know so um, I think unless they're major brands, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't need to be focused in. I mean, that, that's an entire shot just focused on like a building exterior, uh, wherever it was. Uh, I just don't think that adds anything to your video. This shot where the guy's wearing the elite thing is nice. You know, this, this tell, t tells me more about the type of filming you do opposed to this shot of the outside of the building. So I, I think, yeah, we can, we can drop quite a few clips in here that don't really add much to it. Um, not a fan of this because because of the background and things these these criticisms by the way um will also just provide feedback on your filming styles as well you know think about things like think about what's happening in the background you know it might that might serve the purpose for the video if you know it's a if it's a low budget thing but it should it be in your show reel really and, and that's the thing it changes your thought process of like when you're filming stuff for clients you're thinking is this show real worthy and if the answer is no then you really need to question it, why you're filming it like that for your clients in the first place so that's cool I'm gonna try and not stop this like too much. Um, and I certainly don't wanna kind of bring back points. I don't know if this barber is in that building that you were filming at, but it was just a bit weird how it jumped from like kind of fitness to barbers back to fitness. And I feel like I almost got this shot earlier as well. Yeah, this one here, very similar. So it's like, okay, so it doesn't tell me anything more. So I would, I would basically get rid of that. Um, interview wise, um, obviously you could light this better. If you've got, a, if you've got a light really strong coming through the back here, light her from the front more. Um, it might be that is it, it might be like that for a reason. I don't know. Obviously it's just a snip, snip it into it, but, um, yeah, just the... Was that a glitch? Was that my thing? Yeah, look at this. You need to check your exports. <laughs> yeah, we, we do this. Like sometimes it will export with like some problem. Um, and so we do need to check those things through, or at least I get the team to, to double check these things um, when they're exporting. Um, some nice shots though.
that's cool. I like that. I thought that this was like a drone shot through a valley for a, for a second there. Okie dokie. Um, there's that, that, that lens flare that I was talking about as well. Um, it seemed to me, I mean, you've got, I, it might only be, it's five seconds, five seconds between that last clip in here and it almost like you had run out of clips just to fill it in with a song. So just cut the song, chop the song around and make that shorter um, just because it was a bit of a dead, dead space there at the end. But on the whole, mate, like, there's some nice stuff. And by the way, I don't know anyone's abilities. I don't know what level they're at in their filmmaking career. Um, so I'm trying not to judge it as if like this is like, it's clearly not a million pound production, you know, obviously, but these might serve purposes for the moment in time. And you've got some lovely shots in there. Like this shot is really nice and stuff as well. So um, I think again, just, just going back to thinking about your audiences and, and if it doesn't add value, this is, I like this shot. I really like this opening shot. It, like it told me so much about what, what you film. Okay, you clearly film gyms and fitness stuff. So if I'm a gym or fitness person, I'm thinking, okay, cool. Well, that pretty much ticks my box. So it's just thinking about a purpose for a lot more of these things. But um, yeah, great. I think you've got, you've got some nice stuff in there, man. Like, and uh, I think you'd already said that it was a bit of an older one as well. So yeah, cool. Nice. Uh, right, let's move on then. I think I had another tab open uh, with some Academy people. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'll do this and then let's see. See how we're off time. But everyone, there was a big, um, there was a big up, um, you know, a big... Lots of people sent me their stuff is what I'm trying to say. So um, I will definitely do another one of these because it's been, it's been fun. I'm like, kind of enjoying this. And it's nice. I think, you know, creative, there's a joke that I think a lot of people <laughs> say about um, like creativity and brands are just the same thing, but like repurpose and repurposing is a thing. You're not copying someone's ideas, but you're just repurposing it. And basically it's where do you find inspiration from? And we certainly find inspiration here as a business from other people's work, other people's showreels and things. And the, the more of a, uh, of an idea or diverse portfolio and things that you can kind of generate, the more options that you have. And certainly in terms of like just your intellectual property, the, your ideas and the things that happen inside your head, by watching more people's show reels and stuff, it'll give you ideas and inspiration for other projects. So I think it's really, really important. I think it's really cool. Um, so let's have a look at Mitchell's video. Now, sorry, one second. I'm just gonna see, Mitchell might have said that. Has, has he just done it? First thing, I recently finished my first show reel. So this is Mitchell's first show reel. I was worried I got his name wrong then. It is Mitchell, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, okay, God, jeez. Oh my God, it's actually Friday when I'm recording this video and it's, um, yeah, it's been, it's been a long week to tell you. Um, okay, cool. So like, that's, that's great because I have an understanding of where you're at. Um, and don't take these things like massively to heart. They're just, in, they're, they're just things that I think would work better. Um, first of all is your opening on your, your titles. I, I don't know what font this is, but I feel like this is like a Times New Roman style font. Like try and go with something a bit more cool and creative. Like even if it's like, is it Helvetica or something like that? Or at least Calibri. Um, try and pick some of those like web friendly fonts that like they just resonate with people better. And those fonts are actually designed to structure how people think and feel and their thought processes, but also the animation in this as well. Um, you don't need to tell people this is your media production, by the way. Oh, hey, that's the name of the company, NY Media. Yeah, Mitchell Young's. Got ya, okay, I'm a bit slow on that. Um, get a logo made up, man. If you haven't got one already, you're in the academy. I, I, I'll definitely talk about that as well. So um, yeah, grab yourself a logo. Just jump onto Fiverr. Like it's not gonna cost you very much. Just get something. Um, I like the little thing that you've got here, the M&M, so, so perhaps that, that is it. Um, I just don't think you need to say this stuff here. If you're showing off that you could uh, like animate things, uh, then find a different way of doing that. Like I said, the, the previous guy who did like the tracking with, with the creative name through the arm, that was really cool. I love those kind of things. So, so client, I love them and clients love them too. So yeah, I'll try and let this play a bit.
Okay, cool, right. Uh, yeah, did that not load properly or was that me stopping it? Oh no, it did load. We can do anything. Okay, um, right, I'm just gonna kinda like pull this apart a bit as well and like because at the end of the day, I don't wanna just be like, oh yeah, this is good, this is good, this is good and then not like critique these things because I feel like it can pull people in the right dire direction. And then, you know, if you don't wanna listen to my advice, that's completely fine as well, like, but at least you've got that opportunity to listen to someone else's opinion and then make the educated decision whether or not you want to agree or disagree and then you can either adapt or not or not like that's totally fine and that's i think that's important for people to remember sometimes everyone takes opinion as facts and and that leads to a world that we have at the moment where, where it's just all a bit crazy so look just invest in your knowledge and then when you have this knowledge from other people you can make that decision of why you might think it works better or not I'm a, I'm a strong believer in text on screen and I broke down my own showreel as well and I explained that we made so much more money about changing our showreel to our current one, including testimonials. And this stuff doesn't appeal to other creatives. I've had other filmers be like, mm, Ross, I'm, I don't think that showreel is actually that good. I would get rid of like the voiceover and the testimonials and, and things like that. And it's like, but when we didn't have that stuff, we didn't get as many sales. Whereas now we have that stuff and we get a lot of sales because it it resonates with our target audience. If we put ourselves in those business people's shoes, having testimonials is really important, it's a really good thing. So again, we're just going back to who are we making this for? Text on screen can work really well, but we can't make it plain and boring. It needs to be fun and exciting. It needs to be choppy, 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 bam, 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 bang. Like ours, that's what happens with ours. It moves really, really quickly. There was an amazing advert on TV. I think it was like a car advert. And it said like, read this. And then it was like, bam, 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 and it reeled the words off and they got quicker and quicker and quicker. And you were able to read them so quick. It had nothing to do with cars really, but it was just really, really interesting how quick your mind can work. So with the text on screen, we need to make it really, really um, fun and exciting as well. If you feel like it's boring, we can't, we can't do that. And things like we can do anything, um, it sometimes shows that you're a bit smaller and because you are just starting out and you know this is your first show reel. I mean, some of the shots, by the way, are really, really nice. Like you're clearly, um, you're clearly a good camera person and, and you're able to do a good job there. Um, so we just need to back those things up, I think a little bit better. So I think we can make it a little bit more choppy, make the text a bit more fun um, and, and we can expand on that a bit and, and it'll make a, make a huge improvement. Um, you repeated a couple of shots, I think, here from the opening as well. So I think the flow can overall like do a bit better. But these are things, by the way, I'm like I'm talking from experience. These are things that I've done, um, like with my own show reel, especially when I started out. So like I've done these exact same things with the lens flares and with these things as well. And I know now why that wasn't the best, like, the best decision. But you don't necessarily understand at the time. And even if you are just starting out, it's about portraying this professional image you know because someone that you approach doesn't know that you've just started out if I gave you my showreel and you copied that or you you took my showreel and you pitched that against someone else they're not going to know that you've just started out in business you see how that works like so sometimes your showreels by doing these things reflects the point of business that you're currently in at the moment in time and that can be a negative impact especially when you're trying to get work I know where this is. I know where that place is. Yeah, this is cool. And this is really sick and the door's opening. Really, really sick. I like that. Um, this should have gone with your real estate stuff earlier when you were doing the things that you could, could show. And don't feel, don't feel, bad i don't want you to think like oh my god i've just spent weeks putting this stuff together and now he doesn't like it and it's all crap um it doesn't take much to like swap these things around and, and make amendments and changes and like your show will your show reel will never be in like a finished state but you can you can obviously adapt to it and and, and definitely improve it and, it and it will help you get more work like 100 percent. obviously you're in the academy as well so we can chat about this thing on our group mentoring sessions and and absolutely we can we can dive into that um in more detail 
I'm actually intrigued how you did this. I, I'm, I was half guessing. I'm, gu I'm sure they're not automatic doors, obviously. So, because of the way they fall, I guess you've got someone laying down low, pulling them open, perhaps? That's what I would have done. I mean, I'm just guessing. Because when you go through here, I can't work out if you cut there. Uh, when you go through there, it doesn't look like anyone can hide on the other side, so they must have been on the floor. It'd be interesting to know. Drop it in the comments. Let me know how you shot that. <clears throat> nice shot. COVID customer journey returning to work video is really, really good. Um, they make a lot of money. Some nice shots, man. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't understand that at all. What is she doing? Is she running? I have no idea what's going on there. Um, I, I would drop that. Um, uh, we can make this shorter. I mean, this again is a long show reel, um, and your mindset, no doubt, would have been like, "Ah, oh, like I'm going to put everything in, like because I worked really hard on these shots." And this is something that you will learn over time. You just have to be brutal. They actually call it killing your babies, which is an, uh, an outrageous term, um, but it's because you work so hard to generate these clips that it's really, really hard to let them go. But for, you, for your showreel, you do need to. You need to cut this down. Also, don't like how it jumps back and forward and there's a lot of this product. Now, that might be because you haven't shot much product stuff before, but you can easily go and get some, I don't know, some drinks from Tesco's and then shoot some product stuff. Um, We've got loads of product people in the academy as well. So again, on the next call, let's jump on that and people will be able to help you massively like expand on your, on your portfolio here, for sure. Uh, I've gone back too far. These shots are nice of, of the house. Back to the product. Back to the house. Nice Rolex. Hey. What's this guy got? That looks like a Submariner. Very nice watch. I like that. Yeah, I like your logo, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, so if that, that, if that is your logo, then yeah, that needs to be, it doesn't need to be at the start, but it doesn't need to be text here. Um, cool, yeah, so I mean, I hope you found that useful. Um, I think on the whole, you know, nice work. Um, for your first show reel, you know, great. It's, it's definitely more than, I can't remember what my first show, I was gonna say it was better than my first show reel, but I have no idea what my first show reel was like, to be honest with you. I think I didn't do one for ages. Um, but yeah, obviously room for improvements, that's good. And I think you can just make a few changes, trim it all the way down, cut out just stuff that doesn't make sense, keep things in their sections and then just move on and kind of forget about that to show uh, your kind of diverse portfolio. And also feel free to add to it as well. Um, so yeah, but I mean, on the whole, I think that's really, really good. And I think I'm gonna probably just leave it there for today. Um, I've got easily another 10 more to do. So I'm just gonna do that for another video for another day because I've really enjoyed going through this. Um, so please let me know in your comments what you thought about this video and what you thought about my feedback and things and anything that you can do to provide more helpful insights to other people as well. You know, we'd love to create more of a community on this page. We already have the Perspective Academy, which is amazing community. Everyone shares work around within that. If you don't know what that is, the link's in the description. We've got a free training at the moment so go and check that out and you get to experience what's involved in the course but what you won't experience is the group mentoring sessions where everyone helps each other out and we kind of all get work and share that around but we do have the aspiring videographers uh, group on facebook that's completely free as well and you know often post post in there as well yeah so i'm going to leave it there for today i hope you've enjoyed this video make sure you click subscribe and i look forward to doing another one of these very very soon i don't know why i don't know why i've just done that that was the, the craziest thing ever we can just cut there. Cheers, bye.